Hare Krishna, please to meet you. So Guru Maharaj, we read together. Some of us read in the morning, some of us in the afternoon, some of us on Saturday evenings. Okay. And some of them I share the recordings with of the readings so they hear the recording. Okay. Yeah. So more will join in. Uh -huh. and, um, and you said today you would like to read with us um, uh, the introduction of Bhagavad Gita? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, that'll be nice because we want to restart it. And some of us also chanting Hare Krishna mantra on beats. All right, very, very good. Yeah. Very nice. This uh, Neha is here, Nilima, Sneha, Sri Devi, of course, you know. Okay. Paya, Rakesh is there. So, yeah, there's Deepak, Tony is Donnie's cousin. And then there's Alisha, Rashmi, Bhavna is there. So, a few of us. And we're excited to hear from you. <laughs> Mom is just joined in. We also hear sometimes in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. We're a small group, so we are but grateful that you joined us. Okay. Thank you for having me. So, do you want me to share the screen or you want me to make you the host or how do you want to go? Yeah, share the screen. Yeah. Right. I'll share the screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Is that okay, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, yeah, sure. Recording in progress. You read, Guru Maharaj? Okay. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stopitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam. I was born in the darkest ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. When will Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, who is established within the material world, the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya, give me shelter under his lotus feet. Vandiham Sri Guru Sri Yata Padakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavamsya Sri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhanitamsya. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master and unto the feet of all Vaishnavas. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of Srila Rupa Goswami, along with his elder brother Sanatan Goswami, as well as Raghunath Das and Raghunath Mata, Gopal Bhatta and Srila Jiva Goswami. I offer my respectful obeisances to Lord Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, along with Advaita Acharya, Kadarhar, Srivas, and other associates. I offer my respectful obeisances to Srimati Radharani and Sri Krishna, along with their association, associates rather, Sri Lalita and Vishaka. He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Oh my dear Krishna, you are the friend of the distressed and the source of cre and and the source of creation. You are the master of the gopis and the lover of Radharani. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. 
तप्त कांचन गोरंगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणामी हरि प्रिय आई ऑफर माय रिस्पेक्ट्स टू राजरानी हुज बॉडीली कंप्लेक्शन इज लाइक मोल्टन गोल्ड एंड हु इज द क्वीन ऑफ वृंदावन यू आर द डॉटर ऑफ किंग वृषभानु एंड यू आर वेरी डियर टू लॉर्ड कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निचनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास दि गोर भक्तवृंद आई ऑफर माय बेसिसिस टू श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निचनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास एंड ऑल द अदर्स इन द लाइन ऑफ डिवोशन हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so these are the prayers which we recite um, generally often before speaking on the topic of bhagavad gita we will recite these ver- verses which are prayers uh, glorifying the lord and also the glorifying the acharyas so it's important for us you know before speaking on transcendental subject matters we need to first of all seek the blessings of the lord and we do that by reciting these prayers we offer the prayers first to the spiritual teacher and then we offer prayer to rupa goswami and then to other different acharyas like the six goswamis and then we offer prayers to lord krishna and shrimati radharani and then lord chaitanya and his associates and finally we chanted the hari krishna mantra so this is how we begin speaking on transcendental subject matters all right so we will read now prabhu pad's introduction bhagavad gita is also known as gita upanishad It is the essence of Vedic knowledge and one of the most important Upanishads in Vedic literature. Of course, there are many commentaries in English on the Bhagavad Gita, and one may question the necessity for another one. The present edition can be explained in the following way. Recently, an American lady asked me to recommend an english translation of bhagavad gita of course in america there are so many editions of bhagavad gita available in english but as far as i have seen not only in america but also in india none of them can be strictly said to be authoritative because in almost every one of them the commentator has expressed his own opinions without touching the spirit of bhagavad gita as it is all right so shila prabhupad begins by telling us that the bhagavad gita is also known as gita upanishad and he said it's one of the most important upanishads but it's a different is different from the vedic upanishads the bhagavad gita comes from the mahabharat so it's not like the other up upanishads which are vedic which are actually shruti the the vedas are classified in two divisions there's shruti and smriti shruti is referring to the original four vedas you know the original four vedas yajur veda rig veda atharva veda samaveda these are the original four vedas so the upanishads there are 108 upanishads which are within the the shruti but the gita upanishad this bhagavad gita this is from mahabharat and mahabharat is not shruti mahabharat is smriti 
And, and not only is the Mahabharat Smriti, but the Puranas are also Smriti. And uh, the other literatures compiled by great Acharyas, they are all considered Smriti. But the Shruti is what comes directly from the Lord. So some people will not accept the Bhagavad Gita. They may not accept Bhagavad Gita. They may say, no, we only accept Shruti. Now if you look, for example, at the Vedantists, those people who are Vedantists or Gyanis, they don't accept the Bhagavad Gita really. They may speak on the Bhagavad Gita, but they will often quote the more the, the Shruti, the Vedic verses. Bhagavad Gita is from the Smriti, not the Shruti. So that creates some problems, that some people are quite stubborn on that regard. They only follow the Vedas. And although Prabhupada said the Bhagavad Gita is one of the most important Upanishads in Vedic literature, this is the supplements of the Vedic literature, right? The Gita Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita is from Mahabharata, which is a supplement of the Vedic literature. But Bhagavad Gita is most commonly known of all the Vedic texts. Of course, some people, they, they like to read uh, Vedanta Sutra. You may have heard the name Vedanta Sutra. Vedanta Sutra is Nyaya, logic. It, it, it's not Smriti or Shruti, it's Nyaya. So people often ask for Vedanta Sutra. The original Vedic texts are very difficult to understand and their meanings are not so clear. It's difficult to spend a lot of time to study them. Of the, although there, there are supposed to be 108 Upanishads, they're not all available. Some of them are, you don't find them anywhere, difficult to find. But there's about eight or ten which are very prominent, they're well known. Srila Prabhupada did translate one of the Upanishads. You may have seen it, it's a booklet called the Sri Ishopanishad. It's commonly, a, it's commonly referred to as the Sri Ishopanishad. Isha means that knowledge which brings one closer to the Supreme Lord. So that's the most important of the Upanishads. But Bhagavad Gita is certainly well known and it's the, one of the easiest texts. It is. So this is the point. And to understand Bhagavad Gita as it is, we have to get the message of the Bhagavad Gita through the line of the disciplic succession, through the line coming from Krishna. All right? So we'll read more. The spirit of Bhagavad Gita is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita itself. It is just like this. If we want to take a particular medicine, then we have to follow the directions written on the label. We cannot take the medicine according to our own whim or or the direction of a friend. It must be taken according to the direction on the label or the directions given by a physician. Similarly, Bhagavad Gita should be taken or accepted as it is, directed by the speaker himself. The speaker of Bhagavad Gita is Lord Sri Krishna. He is mentioned on every page of Bhagavad Gita as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan. Of course, the word Bhagavan sometimes refers to any powerful person or any powerful demigod. And certainly here Bhagavan designates Lord Sri Krishna as a great personality. 
But at the same time, we should know that Lord Sri Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as is confirmed by all great Acharyas, spiritual masters, like Shankaracharya, Ramanuj Acharya, Madhva Acharya, Nimbarka Swami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and many other authorities of Vedic knowledge in India. The Lord Himself also establishes Himself as the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the Bhagavad Gita. And He is accepted as such in the Brahma Samhita and all the Puranas, especially the Srimad Bhagavatam known as the Bhagavad Purana. Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam. Therefore, we should take Bhagavad Gita as it is directed by the Personality of Godhead Himself in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. The Lord says, Imam Vivishwate Yogam Proktavam Aham Avyayam Vivishwan Manave Prahur Manur Ikshvakave Pravit evam param para praptam emam rajashayo vidu sakale niha mahata yoganashta parantapa so sa eva yamaya tedya yoga prokta puratana bhakto sime sakacheti rahasyam hi etad uttamam so these are three verses from the beginning of the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Srila Prabhupada explains, here the Lord informs Arjuna that the system of yoga, the Bhagavad Gita, was first spoken to the Sun God and the Sun God explained it to Manu and Manu explained it to Iksvaku and in that way by the cyclic succession, one speaker after another, this yoga system has been coming down. But in the course of time it has become lost. Consequently, the Lord has to speak it again, this time to Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So is this clear to everyone? The fourth chapter is describing to us the history of the Bhagavad Gita. That uh, Lord Krishna spoke this Bhagavad Gita not only 5,000 years ago, but he spoke it many, many millions of years ago on a different planet to different people. It, it is said there in the fourth chapter that Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita to the Sun God. Now, some people may be surprised, is there really a God on the Sun planet? I thought the Sun planet was all fire. We should understand there are living entities everywhere. And there's certainly a Sun God on the Sun planet. And Lord Krishna instructed the Sun God in the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. And the Sun God gave that knowledge to His Son. It, it came to Manu and then it came to Manu is the father of mankind and Manu gave it to His Son Ikshvaku and then Ikshvaku gave the knowledge to the Rajarshis, to the, the saintly kings. And in this way the, the knowledge was passed down through the disciplic succession. But in course of time, the knowledge was lost. Yoga nashta parantapa, right? The knowledge was lost. How did it get lost? Well, people changed. People changed the knowledge. This is the problem, that in course of time, things get changed and people start to add something or take something away and everything becomes changed, the effect changes. And everyone thinks, well, I know better, I'll put, well, let's just put this in, it will help it, this will help. 
or take this bit out, this bit's no good, we don't need this bit, and they take something out. So this is a problem when people start to adulterate the message of the Bhagavad Gita, then the, knowledge, the effect of the knowledge is lost. And then it happened that Lord Krishna has to come again and re-establish the message. So he did 5,000 years ago. We know Lord Krishna appears to re-establish religious principles. So he came and at, the, at Kurukshetra it was arranged that Krishna would speak the Bhagavad Gita. All right, any questions so far, ladies? What do you think? Can you believe all this? Is this difficult for you to accept? No, not difficult to accept. You believe that 5,000 yes. years ago there were people on the planet and you believe there's the sun god? Yes. And you believe the, the, the knowledge was transmitted down to this earth planet? for the benefit yes. of people here. Yes. Of course, not everyone is like you. You know, some people like you mm -hmm. may believe, but not everyone may accept. Some people may say, oh, very difficult to believe. How could it be like this? Do you say millions of years ago? Millions of years ago, were there really people here? People will argue. They say, I thought every, I thought, Millions of years ago, there was only apes. There was only the, you know, the monkeys and men hadn't evolved yet. People talk like that. So, do you believe millions of years ago there were people who spoke the Bhagavad Gita? Yes. And what language do they speak it in? Sanskrit. Yes, Sanskrit. Maybe. Ah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but, but any language they spoke, they spoke this, yes. Yes, Sanskrit is the language of the heavenly planets, right? Yeah. And the Swarga Loka, they would speak Sanskrit, probably Vaikuntha even. They speak Sanskrit. The Vedas are all in Sanskrit. The Vedic knowledge was imparted. Lord Krishna put the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahma. Brahma is the first living entity. So it is said, Tenhe Brahma Ridaya Adikavayi. Lord Krishna put the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Lord Brahma at the beginning of the creation. Why? Because we need to know how to live. There has to be some guidelines for people on how to live, what should be the standard, what should be the proper behavior. That's why books like Manu Samhita were written. Manu Samhita prescribes different duties for mankind. What is the proper behavior? And. Uh, the Vedic knowledge is there also. It's like a handbook for people, how we, how we should live, what principles we're meant to follow. You know, it's not just do what you like, or just do what feels good. If it feels good, it's okay. That's not how it is. There, there are laws. You know, we may not like the laws, but... <laughs> Hare Krishna. Sorry. Yeah. There are laws for mankind. So these laws are given in books like the Vedas, the Vedic scriptures. They teach us what are the prescribed rules for people living in the world, how we should live, how we should act. It's not just by chance. It's not just do what feels good. But we have to hear, we have to hear the laws of God. So the scriptures are there to guide us. Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Yes. Can I, can I ask a question though at this point? Okay. Because many people say, oh, but the Vedas are outdated now, we are modern times. 
all that is for before. How do we, what use is that knowledge now? It's so difficult to live in society, to make a living. All this, what you're reading is of the past. It's not... Well, you have to understand Vedic knowledge is not like that. The Vedic knowledge is not of the past. The Vedic, that is material, material knowledge is of the past. But the Vedic, the Vedas, the Vedic literatures give us transcendental knowledge, knowledge from a different realm. You have to understand that the knowledge from the scriptures is not coming from any mundane person. Just like I said, there, there is the Shruti and the Smriti, you see, they're not coming just, it's not like somebody writes a book and he gives a book and he gives his philosophy and presents, you know, people do like that. Sometimes politicians especially, you know, they'll, they'll write their book and they may take, their, take the Bhagavad Gita and they put all their political philosophy in it, you know. They don't really know what was the message of Bhagavad Gita, but they use it to present their message. So we have to understand the scriptures are absolute knowledge and they don't relate to time. They're beyond the realm of time. They're apurusha. Purush means a person. So what is written by a person is imperfect knowledge and it will be relative truth. But what we're speaking about is absolute truth. The absolute truth is without any defects, it's perfect knowledge, you see. It doesn't have any of the defects of the material world, conditioned souls, you know. We have that, we have faults, right? We have imperfections. Our senses are not perfect. We make mistakes, we try to cheat. We're subject to illusion. You know, we have these problems. So th this is the point that we have to understand that the, the scriptures are not like that. The scriptures are the absolute truth, perfect knowledge. This, you, just like Bhagavad Gita, you don't find any fault. It, there's nothing in the Bhagavad Gita which went out of date. All the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita is true today. It was true millions of years ago in the past and it will be true in the future also. So that is the nature of transcendental knowledge. Now you look at modern science and so many things we study at school, it all goes out of date. You know, the theories about the origin of life, you know, they present us with Darwin's theory, oh, we evolved from the apes. They present us with these theories. It's a theory, there's no proof, it's just a theory. Darwin, Charles Darwin speculated about the origin of life and it became, pe people accepted it and they taught it all over the world and people believe it. But it's not true, there's no proof. And there, there's so many things which go on in the world today which we, we don't really know what is the truth. Just like they say the USA went to the moon. Did they go to the moon? 50 years ago, they went to the moon, or more, 50 years ago, yeah, and they went to the moon. Did they go to the moon? Really? Why didn't they go back, you know? It, there's so much propaganda which goes on in the world. We, we, we don't really know what is true and what is not. You have to be very careful. But when you come to scriptures, that is the absolute truth. Of course, people are also uh, polluting this message of the scriptures and they're changing the meaning of the scriptures. And we have to be very careful about wh how we hear and who we hear from. If you get it from the wrong place, the example is given just like milk is a very good very health, healthy things, good to drink milk, you know. But milk touched by the lips of a serpent. If a, if a serpent, a snake comes along and touches the milk, then that milk becomes poisonous. So the same way, message of Bhagavad Gita is very good. 
But if you get it from the wrong source, then it can have a very bad effect. You have to be very cautious, very careful how we, who we hear from, how to understand these things. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh-huh. I'm not sure, Tahil, Tony, you had your hand raised. I'm not sure if you still have the, have the question. Hello, Hare Krishna. Yes, I raised the hand. Uh, this, uh, today I heard the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita and forwarded. And today uh, is spoken about fourth chapter also. And uh, many years before, I attended one satsang, religious course. In that, uh, it was same thing about uh, Arjuna, uh, that Krishna, Lord Krishna is saying, uh, janam ho chuke. He's, he, first he's saying that I've given this knowledge to son. Son gave to his uh, uh, Ishwaku. I think his uh, son God name is Ishwaku. No, no, no. So, son God gave, son God's name is Vibhishwan. Vibhishwan. So Manu, 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 Manu gave to Ishwaku. Manu gave to Ishwaku, right. Uh, so in that sasang, uh, that person is saying that Arjun was uh, intelligent listener. He did not believe blindly that how can I believe you are standing in front of me? How can I believe that you have uh, given the this knowledge to uh, this sun god? Sun god though is very... Then he clarifies, Lord Krishna clarifies, if your and my birth have... We have taken... Tere mere janam both ho chuke I remember all, you don't remember. So he clarifies. The main thing I wanted to say, uh, see, whatever, uh, there are many scriptures, I agree with you, uh, about uh, Bhagavad Gita. Our target is to be one with the God. <laughs> and, uh, but actually, I wanted to clarify this point uh, about the uh, uh, that in uh, Arjun was not uh, Arjun was an intelligent listener, so he blindly he didn't believe. That how can I believe that uh, uh, you gave uh, to son? Uh, son got all this knowledge. So Krishna in second thought. After that he clarified everything. That your birth, uh, my your and my birth are so many. All I remember, you don't remember anything. Right. Yes. And uh, sir, I want to, I want to, uh, apart from this, I want to appreciate God that uh, we all human beings, uh, we, we grew, we are born as a child. And uh, God is, makes one time and we grow, grow very big. We learn to talk and we impart everything. And we, we go away also from this earth. So God makes us one time. <laughs> then our body keeps on growing. So, Bhagavad Gita is also the same thing. God has imported, uh, I agree that so many millions of years back, one time he has uh, preached this Bhagavad Gita, spoken, and it is uh, very much true today. It will be always be true. It is, uh, his knowledge is more than, uh, more than precious, like more than gold and everything. Uh, well, sir, I am not able to explain, but uh, my feelings is that uh, God is great. <laughs> Thank but, you, sir. Yes, that's very good. Yes, you've spoken very nice. Uh, I agree with you. Certainly, God is great. We want to understand how He is great. Srila Prabhupada mentioned He's addressed as Bhagavan. When Lord Krishna speaks, He's called, it says, Sri Bhagavan Vacha. So Lord Krishna is Bhagavan. Lord Krishna is not just any Bhagavan. You know, many people may have the name Bhagavan, but it doesn't mean they're God. But Lord Krishna actually fulfills the real meaning of Bhagavan. So what is the greatness of God? As you mentioned, yes, he spoke the Bhagavad Gita millions of years ago, and he spoke it again most, most recently, 
5,000 years ago. But actually, Lord Krishna is speaking the Bhagavad Gita right now in some other universe. Lord Krishna goes to many, many different universes in the creation. And wherever he goes, he speaks the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is not just, it, it, it's not for just this one planet. It's for the whole creation. The whole creation, every universe, in every universe there are living entities and they need to hear the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. And Krishna travels. He comes to this world and he goes to the different universes and he speaks the Bhagavad Gita and Arjuna goes with him. Because when Krishna speaks, Arjuna is there to ask the questions. Just like he asked, as he asked Krishna, how could you give the knowledge to the sun god? The sun god is so much older than you. Because Arjuna was thinking, Lord Krishna and I are the same age. And Arjuna knew the sun god is much senior to me by age. So how could Krishna give the knowledge to the sun god? And then Lord Krishna said to him, many, many births both you and I have had. I can remember all of them, but you cannot. So this is the, the, the point that Lord Krishna, he remembers his previous births and he remembers speaking this knowledge to the sun god. We don't. We don't remember our previous births, but we have had many, many births. We have been in this material world a long time. We don't just take birth one time and that's the end. We take birth many, many times in different forms of life, in different places, in different planets. Sometimes we may come in the human form. Sometimes we may go to the, high, the heavenly planets and become a demigod. And sometimes we may go down to the lower species of life. And we may become a dog and a tree. They all have souls. They're all living entities. Now we have the human form of life. The human form of life is a great fortune because in the human form of life we can understand this knowledge and we can inquire and ask, who am I? Why am I here? And who is God? And why is he God? God of course means that person from which everything comes. Everything comes from Krishna. That's described in the Bhagavad Gita also. Krishna said, everything comes from me. Everything material and spiritual, it all comes from Krishna. So we want to understand Lord Krishna as Bhagavan. Bhagavan means Bhaga opulences. And Parasara Muni, the father of Vyasadeva, he has described the meaning of Bhagavan. He said, if one has wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge, strength, and renunciation. These are the six opulences of Bhagavan. And nobody can equal Lord Krishna in any of these things. You know, we have some wealth. You may be a rich man, you may have some money. You don't have any wealth compared to Krishna. Lord Krishna was, he had 16,108 palaces in Dwarka. The Queen of England, she has one crown for herself. But Krishna had crowns for each and every 16,108 queens in Dwarka. Because when Krishna comes, Krishna is showing us the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Swayam Bhagavan, the original Personality of Godhead. And when Krishna does things, he does them in an exceptional way. You know, we are trying to enjoy, but we cannot enjoy like Krishna. Krishna is the original enjoyer. Everything is His and we are also His. We have a relationship with Him. 
Do you know the relationship with Krishna? What is your relationship with him? As a servant to Guru Maharaj? Yes. Ah. Right, as a servant, right. He is the master and we are all his servants. Of course people may say, how, what can we do to serve God? What do we have? How can we serve him? He's so great. Does he need us? He doesn't need us to serve him. But we need to serve him. And how can we serve him? Well, by chanting his name and by reading Bhagavad Gita, by hearing his words, that is also pleasing to him. Simply by reading this Bhagavad Gita, we're pleasing him and discussing the topics of Lord Krishna, discussing the qualities of Krishna, it's very pleasing to him. And Krishna says, Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita. Yes? Sir, uh, Lord is uh, so merciful and he, he, he has given option also. If, if you're not able to remember, not able to chant or not able to remember so many mantras, you become my devotee, mera bhakt ban, mujhko parnam kar, main tere ko sab papo se mukt kar dunga. Uh, sab means he is merciful, I mean to say. And uh, remembering God inside uh, gives much pleasure than uh, having gold or anything, worldly things. When you're connected to God. But, but how, you go, how, you, how, how do you connect to God? How do you connect to God? How do you remember God? You say, remember God. I remember the God. First, you have to consider uh, you are nothing. You are nothing. Uh, uh, Lord Krishna, uh, by His grace, you move on. Like, well, that's, like that's, say, Lata Mangeshkar passed away, many people passed away, many big people have passed away. Uh, <laughs> well, we, we all passed away. Lord uh, Krishna, all came and went. Yes, we do. We all we all go. We all come and we all have well, to go. Even uh, the see our brain, we cannot see, but God makes everyone different way in a different way. Some is, is speak very nice. Some cannot, but uh, God sees feeling. And take care of everyone. <laughs> I mean, to oh yes, He cares. Your, your humility is very much appreciated by God. It's an important, that's the first sign of knowledge. Amanitvam adamvitvam, to be humble and without pride. This is very good sign. That's the sign of a, a learned person. People who are proud, they don't have proper knowledge. So you have, you have the, good, the proper knowledge, your understood, understanding is good. But we want to also understand, try to understand more about Lord Krishna and how He is great. We say, God is great. How is He great? What is His greatness? And, and we, we can understand when we hear about Krishna. Uh, see, sir, uh, uh, that Krishna question was our question that time also and now also. He is a Krishna being so near to God. He's nothing. Uh, in this uh, world, how is very difficult, very difficult to remember all this. This how man ko so hathiyo jaisa bol hai, kaise main karunga ye sab. So bolta hai no problem. Kram kram se practice practice, and it will be everything okay. Uh, water drops on uh, on rock. Rock is so solid, then it makes hole on this. So same way, if we daily uh, read uh, Bhagavad Gita, uh, Lord Krishna's uh, teachings, uh, our heart, all impurity will go away. <laughs> yes, very good. If you read every day, very good. Yeah, continue to must be uh, every day. <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. 
Yes, Krishna says like that. He says, abhyasena tu konteya, abhyas, right, practice. Arjuna said, difficult to control the mind. Arjuna was saying, because Krishna was telling Arjuna, you have to control the mind, you have to do this yoga to control the mind. Arjuna said, my mind is like the wind, very difficult to control my mind. But Lord Krishna says, well, abhyas, abhyasena, abhyasena tu kontiya vairagyena chakriyate. Not only practice, but also vairagya. You have to be detached, there has to be, we have to develop that detachment from the thought of material sense gratification. We have to understand what is good for us and what is not. So Krishna teaches us from his words in Bhagavad Gita. We read the Bhagavad Gita. We don't just read it, we try to follow Krishna's teachings in the Bhagavad Gita, right? It's not just only reading. It's not just a reading exercise, but we want to follow also what Krishna is saying. Just like you said, we offer dandabhats, dandabhats to Krishna. We go to the temple, we bow down, right? That is very good, that is very, that is bhakti. Krishna is teaching bhakti, devotion. Krishna is not teaching jnana, he's not teaching vairag, he's teaching Bhakti. We have to do bhakti for Krishna. And how to do that bhakti? Well, just by bowing down before Krishna. We come in front of the deity, we go to the temple, we bow down. That is bhakti. By, because Krishna wants his devotee. It's the devotee. Arjuna is devotee of Krishna. And if we become devotee, we become dear to Krishna. Yes, sir. There's two kinds. Uh, Dandavat, Dandavat, I heard uh, Dandavat uh, in one of the satsang I heard. Dandavat means uh, like a bamboo stick, no? He who must uh, bow down. <laughs> right, right. Like a bamboo stick, Dandavat. <laughs> yeah. Those who, those who have. And those who, those who, know, those who know the uh, knowledge of Gita. First, we must uh, remove our ego, whatever we know, we should sell it like Dandwat Pranam. Then, Krishna Baba ne likha hai. Tu matma ke paas jau, unko Dandwat Pranam karo, baad mein wo matma jan tumko Gita ka, yaane tumko Atam Gyan ke baare mein batai ge. First, we must Dandwat. Jo matma hai, jo jinno ne Gita, jinno ne Paramatma ka pura connection hai, Gyan paan liya, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Tony, we can't hear you. Guru Maharaj, you were saying something? No, I was going to say that the tree which has good, which has fruits, the, branch, the branches will bend low, you see. But the tree which doesn't have any fruits, they're stiff and brittle, they just, they don't bend. So a person with good qualities, he will bow before the Lord. And the other people, they won't want to bow down. Why I should bow down? Why I have to bow? Some people say like that, why I should bow down? They don't like to bow to Krishna, but if they don't bow to Krishna, then they have to bow to old age and they have to bow down to disease and they have to bow down to death. So better to bow down to Krishna. Because by bowing down to Krishna, then you won't have to bow down to old age, disease and death anymore. That's the difference. So it's very good if we, you know, people have to be trained in these things to go to the temple and to offer obeisances, dandabhats, to bow before the Lord. It's very nice. That is part of bhakti. Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita, Manmana bhava madbhakto madhyajimam namaskaru. Right? Namaskaru means bowing down before the Lord. 
Guru Maharaj, we have a question on the chat by Bhavna. Is Gita in other universes the same as our Bhagavad Gita? Well, same message, surrender to Krishna. I don't know exactly, but I'm sure it's the same message, the same principle is there, the surrender to Krishna and the message of devotion, bhakti. That's the message of the Bhagavad Gita, that it's devotion, it's bhakti which is important. And the conclusion of the Bhagavad Gita is that we should surrender to Krishna. Surrender to Krishna means to take shelter of Lord Krishna and to do things which are favourable to Krishna and to give up the things which are not favourable. So certain activities are pleasing, are, are pleasing and certain things are not. You have to know the standard. What is the standard? Well, that has to be understood with the help of the Acharyas. The spiritual teachers, as Prabhupada mentioned, Shankaracharya, Ramanujacharya, Madhvacharya, they're all teaching what is the proper standard, what is the proper behavior for people in this material world. Hmm? So, Bhagavad Gita is giving us the the introduction to these things. Shankaracharya said, a little knowledge of Bhagavad Gita and some drops of Ganges water and you can be liberated from the material world. So Shankaracharya was very fond of Bhagavad Gita. Madhvacharya, Ramanujacharya, all the Acharyas, they all speak Bhagavad Gita. Very, very important. So it's very good you're reading the Bhagavad Gita. Your mercy, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, not my mercy. Your Guru Maharaj. Your oh, mercy, you're reading. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay, any other question? Chandra Didi, did you have any question? Anana. Yeah, you sure, because usually you have very nice questions and Guru Maharaj is here. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference in uh, Bhakti Yoga and Gyan Yoga? Well, Gyan Yoga is cultivation of knowledge, right? You cultivate knowledge. And it may also, Gyan Yoga can be speculation. It's like the ascending process. Like we, we try to cultivate knowledge and then a bit more knowledge and a bit more knowledge and, and gradually we pull ourselves up out of the material world. But bhakti, with bhakti the knowledge uh, that the, everything is coming down, it's coming down from the authorities, from the acharyas and by the mercy of the acharyas we're getting that, we're getting everything. In. We just simply take shelter of the acharyas who bring us to Krishna and take us back, take us out of this material world. So jnana is the pro that's it, pulling yourself up. It's a lot of work, you know. To pull yourself up, it's a lot of effort. Try to, you know, we're in the well. The material world is like being in the well. And we're in the well, it's di very difficult to get out by our own efforts. But if somebody's up there and they throw a rope down to you, you just simply have to hold the rope and they'll pull you out. Now if you, if you want to be stubborn, no, I, you just get me out of the well, you know, and you start climbing, trying to get out of the well on your own, it's very difficult. Great labor, you may never get out of the well. But if you hold on to the rope which is thrown from up and you hold on to that rope, then they can get you out of the well. So we have to, the, the, the part this, that is bhakti, we take, the, take shelter of the spiritual teachers and through their mercy they can pull, they will pull us out of this 
by following their instructions and holding on to the rope, which is like their instructions, then it pulls us out of the well of material existence. So that is the difference between Jnana and Bhakti. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes about Jnana, he says, uh, Bahunam Gyanmanam Ante Gyanavam Man Prapajante Vasudev Sarvamiti Samahatma Sadurlava. This verse comes in the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, and Lord Krishna is describing that after many births and deaths, when one is actually in knowledge, when his knowledge actually bears fruit, then he will surrender to me. Vasudev, Vasudev Sarvamiti, Samahatma Sudurlabaha. So the Mahatmas, the great souls, are very rare. They're very rare. It, it, it's a long process. You see the process of Gyan said after many births and death, when one is actually in knowledge, then he surrenders to me. So by the process of Gyan, you make progress after a long time. It takes a long time. It's a lot of work. It's not easy. But by bhakti, very quickly you can get the effect. Very quick. Bhakti is like going in the elevator. It will take you right to the top. You can walk up the stairs. Jnana is like walking up the stairs, but bhakti is like you go, you go in the elevator. You don't need to walk up the stairs. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, very clear. So you can come to perfection by knowledge, but it takes a long time. And as we said, samahat masudurlaba, such souls are very rare. But the process of bhakti is quick and immediate. You get that you can feel the effect. We take to the process, beginning with hearing and chanting. We hear about Lord Krishna and we chant the glories of Krishna. And we chant this Bhagavad Gita. It helps. So Bhagavad Gita is describing three different yogas. There's karma yoga, jnana yoga, and bhakti yoga. There's like a ladder connecting the different yoga systems. Now karmakand, karmakanda activities, they're on the bottom. They're material activities. They're fruitive. It means we want to enjoy the results. We want something material. So that's not yoga. Yoga is connecting to the Lord, doing things for His pleasure. The other paths are just, you know, they're coming. They're, from karma yoga, we'll come to jnana yoga. Generally in karma yoga is yoga of action. Person doesn't have much knowledge. But as he as he's doing action, he will be blessed with knowledge. And so that jnana yoga is higher than karma yoga. And with jnana yoga, then we get knowledge, we start to understand things more. And we learn, for example, how the Lord is in our heart. And that may lead us in the next stage to dhyana yoga where we will meditate on the Lord in the heart. We will meditate on the super soul. And from the meditation on the super soul, then we will realize our relationship with the Lord, that He is the master and I'm His servant. And we will take up bhakti yoga. That is the natural principle of bhakti. It's working, doing service, loving service for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. And that Bhakti yoga is beginning with hearing and chanting, or we say shravanam and kirtan. And so this talking, reading Bhagavad Gita, this is also kirtan. And this is the real business of devotees. 
when devotees meet together, we will discuss topics of Krishna with each other. We will share our realizations with each other. Yes? Yeah, very true. Guru Maharaj, I don't know if you have more time. We have a question on the chat. Okay. Uh, my Mantosh, did Krishna select Arjuna as the representative of the mankind to pass the confidential knowledge for betterment of human society? And the same with Sun God and other representatives in other ages. Yes, actually we say Arjuna, he's always with Krishna. When Krishna, as I said just now, Krishna's in some other universe and Arjuna's there with him also. He's an eternal associate of Krishna. He's with Krishna so that Krishna can speak the Bhagavad Gita. So yes, Arjuna is the represent. And what is Arjuna's qualification? Why did Krishna select Arjuna? Well, that was described also in the fourth chapter. And Krishna says, "Bhakto si me sakate ti rahasyam he had uttamam," because you're my devotee as well as my friend. Therefore, you can understand this knowledge. So one has to have some qualification, just like Arjuna is qualified as a devotee and as a friend of Krishna. Therefore Krishna enlightens him in the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. And the, of course from that knowledge then one develops devotion. So there has to be that relationship, you see, for in order for Krishna to speak the Bhagavad Gita, there has to be that relationship. Krishna doesn't speak that knowledge to everyone, but he selected Arjuna, he takes Arjuna with him. And Arjuna was put into illusion so that he could ask these questions. Arjuna is the devotee, he's a great devotee. But he was placed into illusion by the arrangement of Krishna in order to allow Krishna to speak the Bhagavad Gita. Not that Arjuna is an illusion, but Krishna put him into that situation. We could call it Yoga Maya. The, it was the arrangement of Krishna to allow him speaking. Srila Prabhupada gives the example, he says, just like when the young girl is married, now at the time after her marriage she goes to stay in her husband's home. So staying in her husband's home, she's not familiar with the ways of the family. So the mother-in-law will not instruct the young newly married girl directly because she knows the young girl's just got married and she's away from home and she's feeling a little insecure with her newly married husband. So the, the mother-in-law, if she wants to instruct, give any instruction, she will instruct her own daughter. And by instructing her own daughter, then it will be understood by the daughter-in-law. So in the same way, Lord Krishna instructs Arjuna. Now Arjuna, he knows everything, but Krishna is instructing Arjuna so that he can instruct. So the instruction is for all of us. As you say, he's the representative of mankind. But actually he's the eternal associate of Lord Krishna and he's playing the part like this so that we can all benefit because Krishna comes to re-establish the religious principles. And he does that by speaking the Bhagavad Gita. Dharma Shaglani, right? Dharma Shaglani, the, the people had destroyed the principles. So Krishna has to re-establish them. And he, by speaking Bhagavad Gita and removing all the, all the asuras, There's, there's the, the good people and the bad people. 
So Krishna came to relieve the, relieve the earth of all the bad people. <laughs> Actually they're all special people. They're taking part in Krishna's pastimes. All right, so thank you very much. Very nice to have a little time with you. Thank you so much for joining us, Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Hare Krishna.